Today in your art studio, we are going to learn about painting. We're going to learn about watercolor paint, tempera paint, and we're going to begin learning about color theory. Color theory is learning which colors mix other colors and how colors behave when they're put next to each other or mixed together. So what we'll be using today, we'll be using semi-moist watercolors. That means that they're already a little bit dampened and you don't need to mix in and stir in a lot of water like you might be used to doing. These are really nice. And then there's tempera. There are two different sets of tempera paints available. These are also the semi-moist variety, which means, again, you don't need much water to activate the paint and they make really rich, bright colors and they're really fun to use. You will also need a cup of water for the table, about halfway full so it doesn't slosh everywhere when you're walking with it, and a paper towel. I like the paper towel under the water. You'll need place to mix your colors, either a mixing tray or a disposable paper that's scrappy. And of course, a paintbrush. Have fun. Here's our color wheel. The color wheel is a visual representation of color theory. It's round, so you can have any of the primary colors at the top, yellow, red and blue are the primary colors. So you might see color wheels in other places with either red or blue at the top. It doesn't matter because no matter what, the primary colors are used to mix all the other colors. So yellow and blue creates all of the green colors here between them. Blue and red create all of the purple and violet colors here. Yellow and red create all of the orange colors. The secondary colors are green, violet, and orange. Then if you mix one primary and one secondary, you get the intermediate colors. Another word for them is tertiary colors. They are yellow-green, blue-green, Notice the primary color is always said first. Blue violet, red violet, red orange, and finally yellow orange. That's our color wheel. Our final vocabulary word for this video and for color theory is complementary colors. Complementary colors are across the color wheel from each other. So, Yellow and violet are one of three main complementary color pairs. So yellow and violet, green and red, blue and orange. These colors are fun because when you put them next to one another, they make each other stand out and pop and look really vibrant. But when you mix them together, they create three different shades of brown. We'll experiment with that pretty soon. Okay, so we're going to take our sketchbooks and open to the next available full spread page. Write today's date at the top. And then we're going to stick with tempera experiments on the left and watercolor on the right. All right. On your watercolor side, you're going to create a color wheel and you want to sketch that in first. Just very very lightly with a pencil and don't worry if you make mistakes or if your shapes aren't perfect, it's okay. 
we're going to start with our shapes for our primary colors. They can be little blobs or clouds. We want to make them in a triangle -y shape like the one I showed before. Then, in between them, a little bit smaller shape for our secondary colors. And in between each of those, the tiniest shape. These are for our intermediate colors. Okay. Very little water to activate the paints. I'm going to fill in my top shape with yellow. And again, using watercolor for this color wheel. I'll rinse it off. And next I will add red. does not have to be perfect. It is just to learn what happens when we mix certain colors together. Red. I also need blue for my watercolors. And now we focus on one section at a time to mix the remaining colors on the color wheel. So I'm going to be using only watercolor for this. And I'm going to start with my yellow and red. Always cleaning my brush if I need to get a new color. Even though there's orange right there, the purpose of this activity is to use only the primary colors to mix the rest. So please stick to that instruction. You get a little bit onto your mixing tray. Rinse your brush so you don't get yellow in the red. more red and add it to the yellow a little at a time. You don't want to overpower it and go too far past orange, which I almost did. Oops. <clears throat> I'm going to paint the mixture right where the orange would go between the yellow and the red. So here I need my red orange and here I need my yellow orange. So for red orange, because I still have red here, I'll add a little bit to one side of this. Put it where it goes. And I need a little bit more yellow to make my yellow orange. Okay, it should look like it's changing gradually from one color to the next. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my 
with my purple side and my green side. Here are our primary colors. Secondary. And then tiny ones are intermediate. Okay, here's our color, color wheel. Now with tempera paint, first, because it is hard to tell with some of the tempera paints, it is hard to tell what color they are. White is obvious, and it's not really going to show up on white paper. But some of the other colors, when you see them next to each other in the block form, it's not obvious what they are. So we'll try them out each. I have a tiny swatch of that. So our complementary pairs our complementary pairs are interesting. They are blue and orange. We'll do that first. The blue is still wet, so I'm not going to paint right against the blue because I know that that will make it run right into the orange. But next to each other like that, they make each other stand out and look really vibrant. When I mix them together, however, they will make a shade of brown. Portrait artists often use this technique to mix skin tone. Our next complementary pair is red and green. And I'll do the same with each of red and green as well as yellow and violet. And finally, we're going to learn a tint, which means adding white. and a shade, which means adding black to create value. Okay, so I will use, let's see, let's try blue for our tint where we're going to add white.
First, I'll show blue how it is without the white. I'm adding a bit of white. I'm going to put some on my palette so I can add a little bit at a time. So there's a little bit lighter blue. And the more white you add, the lighter it will become. So there's a little bit of a value scale with blue. You can also add black to the blue. It's already a pretty dark color, so it might not be so obvious what's happening. So I'll do this. I'll make a shade both with blue and orange. Add some black. Add the black to our palette. And then add a tiny bit at a time to the blue. And that got dark really quickly. That level goes a long way when we're working with our darker colors. Now to try with orange. And there we go, our first painting lesson. Experimenting with watercolor and tempera paints. If you have time and space on your page, you can continue experimenting. And we'll take one more look at what the paints look like when they are dry compared to one another. Looking closely, you can see that the yellow and red mixed to create orange with tempera paint is pretty vibrant, more vibrant, I would say, than the mixture with the watercolors. Watercolors tend to be a little bit more delicate in final appearance, and tempera paint tends to have a little more pop unless you're really watering it down. So if you're going for pop, I would say go with tempera paint. But overall, in the end, side by side, they are similar, yet different. Please try both. In the painting studio, on the counter, there's sponges with a sign. Everything has a sign so that you know where to find things. Stack the water cups and brushes bristles up, please. Acrylics, watercolors, tempera paints, oil pastels, paper and fabric for painting. And then over here is a shelf for painting objects that need to dry. Keep it neat and tidy.